Good morning, sixth grade. It was really nice to see all of you guys that could make it out to today's Zoom session. Um, hopefully, you guys can all make it tomorrow to the Zoom session. And I know you guys like these a little bit better. So we might stop with the videos and just go to live classes every day. Um, but we'll see what happens. So yesterday, we talked about how the Jewish people started to revolt against the Romans and how the Romans treated them after. We talked about how the Romans discriminated against the Jews. They kicked them out. They killed them. They turned them into slaves. And the whole point was that the Jewish people did not like to be ruled by the Romans. They didn't like to be ruled by foreign people because they believed all the, the only person they had to listen to was a God. And that was horrible because remember, everyone wants to be like Romans. So all the people started to discriminate against the Jews as well. So as the Jews migrated around the Mediterranean Sea, they really never really found a place to call home because everybody discriminated against them, which was pretty bad. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and review the questions from yesterday. All right. So number one, why did the Romans force the Jews out of Jerusalem? The Romans forced the Jews out of Jerusalem because this was like a, a punishment for the Jewish revolts against the Roman rule. So they said, you're going to revolt. We're going to kick you out of your hometown and destroy everything. So that's why they forced them out of Jerusalem. Number two, why was the Roman destruction of the second temple so devastating to the Jews? Um, the reason why the second temple, the destruction of the second temple was so destructive to the Jews is because the temple was the center of Jewish life. This was where everyone went to go and gather and practice their religion, cult, their religious beliefs. And this was where everyone went. And because they destroyed this, this was considered a holy site. Now they had nowhere to meet. Number three, how did the migration affect the religious culture for the Jews? So when they had to migrate, they really had nowhere to go to practice their beliefs. So they had to start learning in different communities. And these little communities were now taught by rabbis. And the rabbis were the ones that kind of taught them about their culture and their beliefs. And they didn't really have anywhere to go to meet as a group anymore. So that was kind of like a review from yesterday. Today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about how these two different cultures of Jewish traditions came about because as people started to expand and disperse all across the Mediterranean, different cultures started to spark because they had different teachings and different beliefs because of that. So because of the migration, two different Jewish cultures came about and those are the cultures we're going to talk about today. So the scattering of Jews around the world was called the Diaspora. And it began after the Babylonian captivity in about 500 BC. After that time, the Jewish communities developed all over the world like we saw on the map with those little dots. Jews everywhere shared the basic beliefs of Judaism. For example, all Jews still believed in Yahweh, their one God, and they tried to obey the laws as set forth in the sacred text. So whatever was said in the text, they tried to still follow. But communities in various parts of the world had different customs. They had started to change because of different areas that they were living in. As a result, the Jewish communities in different parts of the world began to develop their own languages, their own rituals, and their own cultures. And these differences led to the creation of two main cultural traditions, which both of these Jewish traditions still exist to this day. So because of this, we had two different Jewish cultures, and this is how they are, or this is what they were. So one of the two traditions was the Akhenazim. And this made up of uh, this group or this culture of the Jewish tradition was made up of descendants of the Jews who moved to France, Germany, and Eastern Europe during the spores. So these were the people that were in Eastern Europe. Okay. So for the most part, these Jews had communities separated from the non-Jewish neighbors. So they kind of separated themselves from all the other people in the areas. Therefore, they developed their own customs that were unlike their neighbors. So because they were so isolated by themselves, they started to do things that weren't like the people that they were living around. Um, as for an example, they developed their own language and their own language was called Yiddish and Yiddish is very similar to German, but it's actually written in the Hebrew alphabet. So some of like the Yiddish language is now part of the English language. But one of the main things that they did was since they're in Eastern Europe and they isolated themselves from everybody, they created their own culture, their own customs and their own language. And the language they spoke was Yiddish. All right, so they got some influence from where they lived, but it wasn't like the people where they lived. It was completely different. The second Jewish culture that developed during the diaspora was the people that went to go settle in Spain and Portugal and in Western Europe. Okay, so the first people settled in Eastern Europe, these people settled in Western Europe. These descendants of the Jews, they called themselves uh, Sephardim. Okay, and Sephardim, they also had their own language called Ladino. And this was a mixture of Spanish, Hebrew, and Arabic. Unlike the Akhenazims, 
the Seraphidims, they mixed with their neighbor, with their region's non-Jewish residents. So these people were not isolated from other people that weren't Jewish. They kind of blended their cultures together. As a result, this religious and cultural practice, they started to borrow elements from other cultures. They were influenced by the other cultures. Some of their known writings and philosophies of this new culture produced the golden age of the Jewish culture. And this golden age lasted from about 1000 AD to the 100s to 1100s AD, okay? During this period, the Jewish poets, they wrote beautiful works in Hebrew and in other languages. And the Hebrew scholars also started to make greater advancements in math, astronomy, medicine, and philosophy. Okay, so these Jewish people, they started to mix with the other cultures and they were influenced and this helped them flourish and make great advancements because they were learning and staying with the time. So as those cultures changed, they also changed with them. So this was a very quick lesson. So today we talked about the two different Jewish traditions and cultures that developed in the world. We had the Jews that, or because they were dispersing all over the place and they didn't really have one unified church, they were pretty much influenced by where they were. So the first Jews, the Akhenazim, they were the Jews of the Eastern Europe, so France, Germany, and Eastern Europe, and they isolated themselves from all their cultures. They didn't want to deal with any of the other cultures because of the, all the discrimination. Because of this, they came up with their own language called Yiddish, and they came up with their own unique customs, traditions, and beliefs. On the other hand, we had the Jews that went to go settle in Western Europe, specifically Spain and Portugal. And these people were called the Sephardim. And the Sephardim, they mixed with the cultures. So they mixed with the Spanish, the Hebrews, and the Arabics, and they mixed with all the other cultures in the region, which allowed them to make great advancements as a Jewish culture. So they stuck with the times, they're influenced by the other cultures, and this helped them develop their own languages. They also began to have many achievements in math, astronomy, medicine, and philosophy. And because of this, two different areas, two types of Jewish traditions came about, and both of these are still present in today's world. For homework, I would like you guys to answer these three questions. Number one, what were the two main Jewish, tradition, or Jewish cultural traditions? So what were the two of them? Number two, what language developed in the Jewish communities of Eastern Europe? So what language do they speak in Eastern Europe? And number three, how did communities in Akhenazim differ from the communities in Seraphidim? So how are these two communities different and what made them different? So like I said, today's lesson was pretty short. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can always message me. Um, Today we talked about two different Jewish cultures, so don't forget that. If you have questions, let me know, but if not, I will see you guys all tomorrow for another live Zoom class. Hopefully more of you guys can make it. Um, it is a lot more fun to see you guys there, so I will see you guys. I hope you guys have a great Thursday, and see you tomorrow morning.